gonna do a presentation on how we can make use of the double hashing that is already in IPFS um, for privacy. So it would require um, some changes to the IPFS network, but double hashing is already here. So um, yeah, so this work has been discussed, um, I would say in a privacy discussion group. And so what do I mean by double hashing? So what we have is in IPFS, we have content and the content, so to get, in order to get to the CID, we're gonna hash the content, we're gonna get some hash. And then from the hash, we'll be able to build the CID using normal CID construction. And then, so the location of this content or the provider record that is gonna point to the content um, in the DHT will be located at the address, which is the hash of the CID, which means that the location of the provider records uh, in the DHT will be kind of the double hash of the content itself. And so quickly going through um, an example of um, how the, the content lookup works in IPFS, um, feel free to stop me at any point if you have any question or if I've made something wrong on the slide. So first the client uh, got, gets a CID from somewhere and is gonna hash uh, this CID to get uh, so the bit representation and uh, gonna look up in the routing table the closest peer to uh, this hash. And for instance, it's gonna be here peer zero. So then it's gonna query peer zero and it's gonna say, okay, I want to find uh, this specific CID. And then peer zero, which is um, a DHT, uh, an, an, yeah, peer in the DHT, uh, in, in DHT server mode, is gonna take uh, this CID, hash it to, um, yeah, take its hash and look up in its own route, routing table, find and close the peer and return it to the original client. And so eventually we're gonna get closer to the content where the, the provider record is source, or we are gonna do it recursively. Um, then to the next peer, which is gonna take exactly the same operation until eventually we find a peer that is hosting this provider record. And the peer is gonna give us a provider record. From this, we'll be able to just read the content and find the, the peer ID of the peer hosting the, the the, the actual content of the file. So we need to do another DHT lookup um, if we don't have the IP address of this peer. And then we can, uh, so again, request the content to the content provider, which is gonna provide the content. All right. And so now uh, we want to know uh, what's the privacy model here? Who can uh, know uh, what uh, kind of data I'm accessing? So of course the content provider uh, know that I am interested in uh, taking this image from, from, from it. And there is, I mean, it's hard to do, but in this way, there's nothing we can really do. We download the image from them. Then there is the peer hosting the provider record that will know, that will give me the provider record. So uh, they will know that I am interested in, in this file, probably, if I download the provider record. And then all of the peers um, that are gonna help me uh, to route to the provider record uh, are gonna know that I'm interested in this file. And as well, so anyone, any passive observer that is on the path can be ISP or someone the same airport Wi-Fi or will be able to know that I request the CID. And if they want to observe me, they, they can just take the CID, do the request and eventually download the file that I'm interested in. And so, you, um, it's very easy to track what uh, people are looking at. So for instance, if there was, um, let's say YouTube that was uh, built on top of IPFS, you wouldn't want the content to be encrypted because you would want uh, everyone to be able to access it. But just by looking at the CID that the people are accessing, you can see which kind of videos they are looking at and you can uh, really spy on them. So that's, um, so that's uh, kind of the problem. So we want uh, uh, client privacy or reader privacy in the DHT so that um, the, the, the reader um, yeah, can, ac can access thing more privately. And so we only focus, uh, so here in the DHT, we don't focus about uh, bit swap or um, 
the content provider privacy or uh, the gateway, we just focus on the DHT and normal client. So what we can do as a first solution is to look up for um, a prefix, all right? But the problem is, if we look up for a prefix of the CID, uh, we will not be able to route to the correct file. Because if we take a prefix of the CID, when we're going to hash it, it's going to have no locality with the, hash, with the hash of the CID itself, which means that it cannot work uh, as is in the system. So what we want to do instead is take um, a prefix, so a substring, of the hash of the CID. And so it means that uh, the DHD routing process has to be adapted. So what do I mean by this? Is that, so in a first step, um, we need to modify that instead of requesting the CID directly from the peer to the, uh, the sorry, the client to the DHD routing peers, I'm going to request the hash of the CID. And what it means is that the, the, the peers in the DHT routing, to, uh, in the, yeah, the peers routing in the DHT will not have to compute the hash of the CID anymore which is good news because it's uh, an operation less to do. And they can still perform the same operation by looking up in their routing table the closest peer to the value I'm requesting. And so um, it required to, uh, a change in the server code, but here it wouldn't change anything for privacy. But then we can build on top of it. So the second change is, um, can you read the red? Yes. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, by choice of color. But uh, so the client first is going to, oh, perfect, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically the, the, the client is going to just uh, take the a prefix of the hash of the CID. And um, so then compute the, the, the closest peer to the prefix or to this, the hash of, of the CID itself, doesn't really matter. And then request the prefix, okay? And so the, the prefix is, so we need to adapt a little bit the routing process because um, when you look for the closest uh, peer to actually a prefix, you will look for, um, yeah, all of the peers would identity would uh, exactly match this prefix, and if not, um, just consider it as random bit and take uh, what's closest the, the same way that you would do the XOR distance um, normally. And so you can do, so it would actually work with the routing, so you can get um, every time closest peer. And then when you uh, request a peer that actually um, has one or multiple uh, provider record that match this prefix, um, this peer is not going to know uh, which of these CID you want, and it's going to give you all of the CIDs. Uh, sorry, all of the provider record. So here we have an overhead, um, a network overhead, because we're going to have many provider record uh, that are transmitted against only one in the current IPFS. And then what's the client going to do is it's going to discard the CID it doesn't care of, and then do the same thing uh, as he used to do. And so, yeah, now just a word about the prefix length selection. So here I, did, uh, I said that we have to compute a prefix, but I didn't tell the, the length, not a secu security parameter. But basically what we want to achieve is K anonymity, which means that uh, if we take back this example, um, if I want that, on average, every time um, uh, five pr provider records are given to me, um, then the file I want to access will not be distinguishable again, uh, inside the, these five files. So I get uh, K anonymity with uh, K is equal to five, which, yeah. And so basically to compute the prefix length L I have to take, it depends on the, the yeah, K anonymity, so the K parameter which is not to be confused with the K bucket or the K parameter from Kademlia. And so, yeah, that's basically the computation. So the idea is if you take, um, I don't know, the node, so that would be the, the key space of Kademlia. And if you take the left 
uh, most nodes, so zero, 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 zero. And you want to have, I don't know, four provider records. Then um, it means that you have to take the prefix zero, zero, so that you will be returned uh, four different elements. And so, yeah, basically that's it. The, the computation. So we have to take the log of the total number of CID in the network um, divided by the, uh, uh, yeah, the K parameter. And so what do we gain from implementing this? Uh, we get K anonymity and plausible deniability, which means that, um, that you can pretend that, uh, so you, you request a prefix, you get served uh, five provider records. And uh, you can pretend that it's not uh, this sensitive or illegal file that you were downloading, but another one. So it does make sense. And so we uh, are more protected or less vulnerable to the DHT routing table nodes, to the node storing the provider record and the passive observer. But um, we don't have uh, L diversity or T closeness, which has which are two different metrics associated with uh, K anonymity. Um, we have a small network. Yeah, we have a network overhead just for uh, the provider record transmission. And um, yeah, it is very easy to just replay uh, the same prefix request. And so, um, yeah, so basically anyone could just so if we take peer zero, peer zero could just take the prefix, request it, get all of the provider record and say, OK, I know a bit what client what client is looking for, and I know it's been file number four and not the other. So the privacy is, is not uh, still that good, but we reduce the impact that this actor may have. And but we can go further. We can go and encrypt the provider record. So how do how do we do this? So we still want the provider record to be accessible to anyone with a CID. So we want to encrypt uh, the provider record using the CID. And so you would need to know the CID to um, access the, the content of the provider record. So it means that, uh, so the first part doesn't change, but uh, the provider record would be stored encrypted on the node, which means that if I want to pin a node on IPFS, I will first, um, encrypt the node, uh, sorry, the, the provider record with the uh, key derived from the CID itself and, uh, and push it um, to the DHT. And so it even gives a bit of a content provider uh, privacy because uh, then the peer storing the provider record wouldn't know what's the content of the provider record. And then, um, so a, a honest client that knows the CID will be um, able easily to uh, decrypt the, um, the provider record using the key derived from the CID that it knows from the start. And, but yeah, so the overhead here would be uh, one decryption of symmetric crypto would have been on the client. But then, so for instance, if we say that peer zero is malicious, so peer zero will request uh, the, the prefix. And so we'll get all of the encrypted provider record and peer zero only knows the prefix, which is a part of the hash of the CID. So even if um, peer zero had the whole hash of the CID, it would need, he would need to do a pre-image attack to be able to recover the CID, which by design is not possible. So uh, peer zero would be able to get the encrypted CID, but not be able to access it and see what's inside. Um, yeah, so that's mostly it. Uh, uh, the, the observer can only decrypt the provider record if they have the CID. But it means that it's not a perfect security because if you want to access, I, I don't know if you have the picture from your holidays and that only you access it, then it is fine. Only know, know the CID and nobody will be able to see your, the, the picture of your holidays. But if there is, again, so if we say that there is a decentralized YouTube on IPFS, someone could go through all of the videos, get all of the CIDs of the video, compute the hash of them and have a big dictionary. And so when, so yeah, so an observer, when they see the, the a prefix that is requested, they can go and check up in the dictionary if that would match a video and they can still um, 
uh, yeah, know what you're looking at. So it improves privacy a lot, but it's not the, the perfect solution. It is still possible to, to make some attacks um, with uh, yeah, a lot of resources. And so the downside is that we have a one a symmetrical decryption operation. And so, yeah, we still we reduce again the, the, the impact or the, the power that this adversary uh, can have. And so that's kind of the final picture. Yeah. So, so one additional piece here, right, is it does mean that every provider record is now distinct, where before many provider records were the same. It was just iPad. But now yeah. each one is different. So in something like a network indexer, that makes the database much more uh, yes. Because we've gone from yeah, a small number of providers to one distinct provider per SIP. Um, but it does seem like potentially there's a way to de link that, uh, or, or not de link, but um, you could potentially have two layers one that is a provider record that's just I am a provider, and you can pass the key of which provider that is. So if you're in two stages, there's potentially a way to. Uh, do this without uh, having the actual provider record. Um, yeah. Per se. Uh, so there, there's potentially some other thing in this final research that will be created. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's. I mean, it's where I stopped my thinking, but I think it can be improved a lot, and there's a lot of implementation details I'm not aware of. So, yeah, there, there are probably some tricks that don't work exactly like this, and it's probably possible to improve it uh, even more. But yeah, so the, the, the conclusion is that we can yeah, really significantly improve the, the reader privacy uh, in the DHT, and only this. And uh, the, the, yeah, so the DHT server uh, wouldn't need to hash the, the CID for each request, which is good, because um, when you look up, you, you have a lot of node helping you to to be routing, it's that much of hash operation less. And the overhead to pay is just um, sending k provider record with k being the, the k anonymity parameter instead of one, but only once per request. And the computation overhead would be one symmetrical decryption of the provider record, which shouldn't be too heavy even for mobile uh, applications. But yeah, it would require to modify the server code and go through a migration. So republishing all of the CIDs with uh, uh, all of the provider record now encrypted to be able to find them again. And yeah, it's then, I mean, it gives also the illusion of privacy. So people may feel safe, whereas they shouldn't because it's still possible to attack if you have a lot of resources or if you are not in this very specific reader privacy DHT lookup case. So, yeah, now I'm happy to take any question if you have. Yeah. Um, so the prefixing part kind of reminds me of like, like a more general, like an instance of a more general thing that would be like a locality sensor attack. And you mentioned locality earlier really on. So like, uh, the question is basically like, did you consider using other methods than prefixing as a way of like, Hiding some of the information about what you're looking for, and like <coughs> with how some could hash would be like sim hash or something. So it's more like, is this even on your radar? Or is there a good reason that wouldn't be useful here? Because it, it would potentially be a way of getting around that like attack you mentioned, where if you had a big list of all the hashes of everything and you need to prefix someone asked for, you might be able to just look things up by prefix and have a good idea. But with a different strategy than prefixing to hide information. Yeah, so the, the, the thing is that it's hard to do privacy and content routing because if you make each file distinct, then you're not able to route it anymore. And so if you do like not a prefix, but a suffix method or something else, you lose the routing pro yeah, uh, proper, uh, uh, yeah, the, you lose the, the routing component. So yeah, what, what we have here, is that if you have the prefix, you know it's still going to be in here. So you can route until this node. Mm -hmm. oh, or is this is big to clear or? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you know that it's in this zone and you're going to get those provider reports. 
But if you do any other techniques, you will not be able to do the kind of problem. Or you'll have to have like I don't know one a provider report for each reader, which doesn't scale. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you probably still also want to like modify bit swap as well, right? Because otherwise it'll just leak which CID you want to like everyone you talk to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, but yeah, I think some something similar would be possible. Yeah, like I guess once you 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 just limit your request to people you know have it versus, or maybe you can do something similar to this where you do like double, double hat yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, all right. No more question. Then I'll leave the floor for the next speaker.